Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. First Thessalonians chapter 5. For the times and the seasons, brethren, okay, what we just talked about. We talked about death and the rapture. Times and the seasons, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you. We don't know. And in uh, Matthew 24, 32, Jewish times. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. This is the second advent. We've gone from the rapture to the second advent. And no one knows. We know it, the, the tribulation period is seven years long. When's that going to happen? When's the rapture going to happen? We don't know. And yet people go out there and try to make dates. And anybody who, you know how you know a religious phony is when he'll give you a date of the rapture or the date of, anybody who gives you a date, just a year, never mind a month, they're lying to you. Because Jesus said in his earthly ministry, only God knows. So Paul's not making no date. So he goes from the rapture to the second advent of Jesus Christ. What came first? The rapture. What comes next? The tribulation. What comes after that? The second advent. Now, there's some people who say, oh, the rapture, you know, you'll happen in the middle of the tribulation. And you don't know your Bible. And by the way, this goes with John's teaching, too. John, the book of Revelation. There's seven churches. Then there's a coming up hither. And then we're in heaven. And then later on, there's seven years, seven trumpets, seven vials, seven sevens. And then the Lord comes back. The church disappears before the tribulation period. So, for when they say, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, that expression Paul is using from the Old Testament. That expression of a woman, they say the ultimate worst pain is to give birth to a child. That's what they say. I think the, the, the top two would be probably giving birth to a child. I don't know. I've never done that. Without drugs. Without any medication. And I think probably number two would be third degree burns. But that expression, the woman travail with a child. That is the expression used for the tribulation period. So women, if you can think about giving birth to your child, how painful that was. And God uses that expression for the seven years of Jacob's trouble when Satan reigns. Now, don't you think that's serious? I think I think I heard a comedian one time, a worldly comedian, man, she said, he said, you know, the best way is to describe a woman describe the pain of childbirth to her husband is to take his bottom lip and pull it over his head. But that's what God uses. And they shall not escape. Well, that's interesting. And the thing is, who's the they? I don't know. Those are, I mean, in the tribulation period, but does that include Jews? Because some of them are going to run down the shell of Petra. So Paul has jumped from for the Thessalonian church. He, man, you guys are doing great. You're, you're 
ex excellent, well-founded examples of the Bible for Christians to live. You have seeking God. You are seeking the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is something called the rapture. And not only that, seven years of tribulation coming in Jesus Christ. As I said today to the people at the farmer's market, listen, if you get saved right now, not only will that change your destination from hell to heaven, but if the Lord will come back right now, you will escape the tribulation period. And Paul says about that, and none shall escape. You're not going to beat the Antichrist. You're not going to beat his computer, whatever he uses. You're not going to beat the number. The Bible says that if you want to eat and if you want to live, you've got to receive that mark. And what did Paul say to John writing? And none shall escape. The only judgment that comes after the tribulation period is when God separates, I say God, Jesus Christ, separates the sheep from the goats. And there are people who are saved in the tribulation period by their conduct of the Jews. And Jesus said they had no idea what they were doing for salvation. So... And if they're going to feed the Jews, which is, I believe one of them is, in order to feed the Jews to get food, they've got to receive that mark. But none shall escape in the tribulation period. And that's not a salvation joyful escape. That's not like saying, hey, everybody in the church age today, like they preach in the pulpit, everybody will be saved in the end. We'll all be judged and going to heaven. No, that's not the context here. Is you're going to have seven years with Satan ruling. And none of you are going to escape or here. I will. How did I escape? The great escape. The rapture. But ye brethren are not in darkness. So see. That's Satan. Satan is darkness. Jesus said I am the light of the world. John 1. I think light is mentioned seven or nine times. In reference of Jesus Christ. That that day. That day should overtake you as a thief. What day? The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So everybody, when Jesus comes back on this earth, is going to see him. You're not going to run to the hills. You're not going to run to the caves. You're not going to go underwater. You're not going to run into coal chutes and diamond mines. You're not going to escape Jesus Christ coming. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Well, Jesus said in John chapter 10, a thief comes to destroy, climbing over them. Now he takes part as the thief. And he mentions a parable when he's speaking to the children of Israel. Jesus, in his, in his earthly ministry, he says, you know, if the strong man would have knew when the thief cometh, well, who's the thief? That's Jesus Christ. Who's the strong man? See, many people preach that thing. Well, Jesus Christ is the strong man. Uh, 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 uh. That's Satan. Here, Jesus is the thief. Ye are all the children of light, talking to the Christians. I'm light. And when I, when I listen, I, I keep saying the farmer's market because that's my ministry. That's what I know. I've always been taught, you preach what you know. And the reason why they hate me for preaching the gospel, because they're like a bunch of cockroaches, and I'm the light that comes on. And when you walk in your kitchen in the middle of the night to get yourself a Coca-Cola, and you flip that light on, do the, do the roaches come out and say, hi, buddy, how you doing? No, they take off. Because the light shows who they are. Do you realize this seven years of the tribulation period, there is going to be no light. You think there's sins and shooting and stuff going on right now? You wait to Satan and God have it out. God has three sevens of judgments during that, three, during that seven years. And Satan's killing saints left and right. So your theater, school, mall shootings are nothing compared to what Satan will do. You think you got a family? The Bible says your own family member is going to turn you in. You wouldn't be able to trust anybody. But we are light. What do we do? 
I've been accused of being stupid. I've been accused of being hateful and, and obnoxious. And all, but I'm bringing the love of God. Light. And the children of the day. Daylight. So what do they call it? Daylight savings time? That's interesting. We are not of the night nor darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. Now, that does not mean insomnia. I, somebody probably, you know, think, okay, we're all, we can't sleep. No, that's, listen, as your Christian walk, don't lay down, don't rest, don't give up, don't stop. Until when? But when I would have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them that are asleep. And, pre and prevent them which are asleep. And which sleep in Jesus. You're resting. Is when this body gives out and croaks. Dead. Flat line. That's your sleep. That's your time to sleep. Jesus said in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 4. When can you sleep as a Christian? When you're in a box. Or you're a vapor cloud. Whatever. However you die. You've been fed to the fishies. Your ashes are in a urine. That's your time to sleep. Right now, it's not the time to sleep. Why? Because the tribulation is coming. God has warned us not only of hell for those that are lost, but the tribulation. And if you're a Gentile, your chances are 98% you ain't coming out of that. 2% on what your conduct is to, Jesus, to Israel. Thank God God took me out of all that. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. And that doesn't mean without alcohol. That means let's be proper. Let's not be funny. Let's not be, let's be serious. The whole world's asleep. I just watched a video of a, of a, a preaching in, in London, and today when I was preaching in Daytona Beach, they're walking by, and, they're, and you don't think they're, you, you got to think that they're not hearing you. You know they are, but the way they act, you know, they're slaughtered, cut, just keep on going. Walk away. They had packages and all that, and, to, you know, for us, they got strawberries and, and fruits and all that, and they're asleep. And when God's giving me a loud voice, I'm sorry, he's giving me a voice to try to wake you up. And some of them are waking. Oh, we hate that. The guy today he goes in and he comes out. Shut up, you're stupid. Well, you're a fool. For they that sleep, sleep, <laughs> sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Well, that's not America. America's drunken all the time. Down here in Florida, you go to a convenience store and the shelves are stocked with cold and warm beer and wine coolers. And, and the grocery stores are trying to get the hard stuff now. Grocery stores are only limited on, on their alcohol content by percentage, but they want to go higher. It's 24 hours a day. 24 hours. Back when Connecticut, and things, things may change. You pull the curtain at a certain time. I don't know if things may change, but when I left Connecticut, you couldn't buy liquor after a certain amount. So, we're not to be drunk. Okay, Brother Hayward, yeah, I know that the Bible, the Old Testament, really does not say you, a Christian should not drink. But what about this verse? If we are children of the day and not of night, and they say to be drunken in the night. Well, we have no night as Christians. We're always day. Like, like Joshua in his battle, he said, Lord, you know, I need a little help here. Can you have the sun stay? And the sun stayed. And Moses, when he's on the mount, all he saw was light. He was there for 40 days and 40 nights. Do you believe there was any darkness in the eyes of God? What is New Jerusalem? It's all light. There's no, there's no darkness. You know, I say this, and I, I like this story, because when we're in New Jerusalem, and you won't be able to do this, but if you got yourself a wooden box, no holes, 
And you put yourself in that wooden box and had somebody seal that box with nail and corks and wrapped it in paper. Inside that box, there would be still light. You don't believe me? What about the Holy of Holy place? When there was no candle, there was nothing in that place but the but the high priest when he went there knew where to put the blood. He couldn't put the, he couldn't accidentally put the blood on the cherubim. He'd be why? He had to put that blood on the mercy seat, right? How do you know where the mercy seat is if he walked into pitch darkness? And yet there was no outside light. That place was covered with curtains. It was covered with badger skin. It was covered with go and read. That place was completely covered, and there was a thick veil in between where the candlestick was, and yet there was no light in there, but there was light. That's us. And God, when he died on that cross, ripped that veil, and that light showed out greater than the candlestick. But let us, who are of the day, be sober. Come on. Let's take it. All right. I know sober in the Bible means seriousness. But in the context here, he just talked about drunkenness. So I guess we can actually take verse 8, this sober as, hey, no intoxication. In context, you can say that. And I don't think I'd be wrong. And <coughs> I don't think I would suffer a loss at the judgment seat of Christ. If I, I don't think that's on the context. He just said drunkenness. Let us be sober who are the children of the day. Because the ones at night are drinking. So I don't think that does ill. I think it's good. Put it on the breastplate. What was the breastplate in was it Ephesians? And what is that breastplate? Righteousness, right? That's what we learn. Oh, well, look at this. Of faith and love. And you go back. One of those other armors was of faith. So... Our armor, according to Galatians, Ephesians, is more than what we expect it to be with study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word to My blessed faith is not only righteousness, but I need faith with it too. You can't have righteousness without faith. And you can't have faith without righteousness. You say, well, show me that. Today, the Lord wanted me to preach about religion. Some people got faith that Mary can take care of them. Well, that's not righteousness. That's not a breastplate. That is not going to protect your vital organs. And love. And for an helmet, the hope of salvation. So we see that the armor is all different things of the trait of a Christian. And you've got to study it. Oh, I put it on. Do you know how to use it? Do you know what it is? Do you know where it goes? For God has not appointed us to wrath. All right. John the Baptist says, He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. But also, in the context of chapter 5, what we've been reading so far, the wrath of God is the tribulation period. It's the second coming of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is not coming as a lamb, folks. He's coming as a ferocious lion. The lamb is now. The lion's later. So this wrath is not only hell. It's the seven-year tribulation period. It's Jesus Christ. And it's the lake of fire. But to attain salvation, it's being saved from what? What must I do to be saved? Be saved from what? Oh, don't preach hell. I've had a Christian tell me, don't preach hell. You preach, you said too much about hell. What is there other salvation to be from? The wrath. What's the wrath? John the Baptist said that was hell. And with the context of, of chapter 5 again, the tribulation period. And the second coming of Jesus Christ. Very few people when Jesus comes are going to be right. Who died for us. 
Christ died for us according to the scriptures. That whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Well, look at that. Now we're going back. All right, the death issue again. Paul's like, let's cover the death issue. I know you, they put, they guaranteed they asked some quiet question about the death. Paul went into the rapture and he went further to the tribulation, the second coming. And right, let me conclude with, with, with the question about the death. You got eternal hope. And he wrote to another church. He said to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. So, what? who died for us, that whether we wake, that's the resurrection, or sleep, that's death, we should live together with, okay, so when you die, let's say the Lord doesn't come in my time, he didn't come in the Thessalonians time, that is not the end of your hope, don't give up. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And look at verse 18, the previous chapter. Wherefore, comfort one another. There's no comforting in death in the Roman Catholic Church. As a widow, you go up to that priest and you have him say prayers, you give him money, and you buy candles. That's not comforting that he's in a purgatory and... How many prayers would take that priest to get? That's not comforting news. And if you violate the church during your lifetime, and you're not buried at the at the uh, the church cemetery, and you didn't have a wedding at the at the church altar and all that, you're damned to, to be anathema. It means cursed. That's not comforting in sleep. Now listen, I've had grandparents. Uh, I've had a. a a child that, that was born and died. I've got a wife. I've got friends. They've all died in the Lord. I know where they are today. And guess what? I know when I die. I know where I'm going. Now, the way of dying, that's what scares me. I don't want to go in flames. I don't want to, I almost drowned one time. That is a terrifying thought. I had one time, I had attacked because of hepatitis. I could not get my breath. It would not come. That is terrifying. If I were to have my choice, say, Lord, let me close my eyes and sleep and not wake up in this earth anymore. But if I were to die in a car crash, or explode a million pieces or a uh, house fire or whatever, Death is a hope. Death is a blessed hope. Now, I don't know what happens when you die, if you can see the people around you, what's going on, but your soul will depart from your body and be with the Lord. It's almost instant. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye... You're already doing it, guys. So there was a death in the, in the Thessalonica church, and it really caused a lot of questions. And the Thessalonians were doing right. And Paul just backed it up. Paragraph. We're closing the letter. And we beseech you, brethren, say people, to know them which labor among you. And are over you in the Lord. And admonish, admonish you, warn, declare fault, to judge. Judge not, you should be judged. Well, admonish means judge. There are people who are working. And you better know who they are. And the, over you and the Lord, your pastor, your deacons. And you better realize people are going to judge you. Hopefully judge you right so you can do right. And to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake. Listen, if they're serving the Lord and they're doing right and they're trying to help you, you better give them respect and honor in love. And be at peace among yourselves. Don't fight with yourself. Don't fight with them. Don't let them fight with you. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Hmm. 
You're supposed to declare people's sins. Comfort the feeble-minded. Help them. Support the weak. Be patient to all men. Our help is to be inside the church. And we went to we went to a convenience store today, and some guys out there asking money for you know, and I was listening to them. It was a scam, guarantee. I'd say ninety five percent chance it was a scam. Five percent it was good, but you know that's not really the guy I'm supposed to be helping. Now there's somebody in church who needs gas money, and a quart of oil. That person I'm supposed to help if I got the money. And I'm to be patient with all men. So when I'm preaching to the lost people and I think they're not listening, I'm, you know what? Just Lord, they need help. Lord, forgive them. Lord, help my words will go into their ears, down into their heart. Lord, please keep Satan away so he doesn't steal that seed. And Lord, just, you know, they're the world. They don't understand. They're in dark. Help them, Lord. Second Corinthians 4 4. Be patient with them. Don't give up on them. Don't walk away from that ministry God's giving you because they're not listening. That's what it means. But if somebody in the church needs help, help them. You can do it. The only thing you can do is pray. Pray. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. And we read that in the previous chapter about business conduct. And this is beyond business. Don't do your neighbor or anybody any fraud. We're supposed to be living honestly. But every fellow that which is good, uh, but, yeah, but every, but ever follow that which is good. You find something that's good, follow it. Walk away from that is bad. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore to a church that is suffering persecution. Rejoice. You got extreme back pain. You got extreme pain in your body. It hurts. Rejoice evermore. That goes against the world. You know that? There are people out there in the world. They're taking illegal drugs, uh, legal drugs, alcohol, marijuana, whether it's right or not. I don't know. That's not my place to do. But they're not rejoicing. Yet the Bible says, go against the world. Go against them. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. So rejoicing comes before prayer. How do you like that? Oh, God, uh, 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 please help me. Uh, have you rejoiced? Well, no. Well, that comes before prayer. Ready? Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. Oh God, you mean I gotta praise you? I gotta say I gotta rejoice, I gotta then pray, and then I gotta thank you. I'll thank you in the in the third week of November. How's that sound? Is that good, Lord? I'll give you I'll give you one day. Hey, listen, Lord, I'll give you one day in the springtime to come to church. I'll give you one day in November, and I'll give you one day in December. Isn't that good enough? <clears throat> no. Everything. Everything. That's a scary. And I don't even want to give anything. I don't want Satan to come into my life. <laughs> Lord, look what he's preaching. Well, can I get after him? You know, Job, when he had lost everything, including his children, you know, he gave thanks to the Lord. And then when he was attacked with the boils and his wife attacked him, you know, he gave thanks to the Lord. That scares me. That's present tense. Everything in everything. And it doesn't say in everything for or in for everything. It says in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've dealt with people early in my Christian life. You know, what's the will of God in my life? And there were messages on messages. The will of God in your life. The will of God in your life. What is the will of God in your life? In everything give thanks to God. In Christ Jesus. 
Chris Ernie knew. Quench not the spirit. Don't put it out. Keep it going. Keep it fueled. Keep the oil going. You know what that quench? You know what that oil was? That oil was in the holy place. It was the candlestick. Seven prongs. One in the center. Three on the outside. That kept the light in the holy place. And they would have to come in and refill it with olive oil. Or uh, the Bible says olive no, it says oil olive. That's hard to say. When you get you always say oil, olive oil. Oil olive. And they would have to trim the wicks. Because if you didn't trim the wicks, it died. It was beaten on. So you know what you have to do is you have to trim your wicks. You gotta fill it up. Because that light goes over on the table that has six and six. How do you quench the spirit? Stop reading your Bible. Stop thanking the Lord. Stop praying. Stop rejoicing. And you'll put the Holy Spirit out. Take off your armor. Despise not prophesying. Paul's full of it. He just told you the Lord's coming. He just told you the rapture's coming. That's prophesying. Hell is for lost people. That's prophesying. New Jerusalem is for saved people. That's prophesying. Listen to it. The rapture is December 12, 2007. That's a false. That's false. That's false prophesying. Prove all things. You hear a message from your preacher. I don't care who he is. You hear a message on the radio, on the television, on the streets. Prove it. And hold fast that which, if it's good and proper by the Bible, you better hold fast to that. If it's not, you better get rid of it. That goes for people, places, or things. Do I belong in that place? Well, that's not a good Bible place. Get away from it. That's not good Bible dedicated people. Get away from it. That's not a Bible thing I should be doing. Get away from it. Prove all things. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You say, what, what, what's that? Greatest example I can ever think of. You see me in the street and I'm drinking from a paper bag. What's it look like? Oh, no, no, wait, no. It's, it's a bottle of Pepsi. But what does it look like? It looks like I'm drinking alcohol. I'll even go so far as to say this one time I, I said in prison ministry. And boy, I got a lot of head nut. You got a white pen? Keep it out of your mouth because it looks like you got a cigarette. Stain from all appearance. If it looks bad, you don't do it. Now, listen. Listen to me. A stain from all appearance. If it looks bad, why would Paul say something like that? Because you may be judged if it looks bad, if it looks evil. If we're going to be judged on our thoughts and every idle word, everything we've done that looks bad, we are told by the scriptures not to do it. Abstain. Stop it. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, knows the order, spirit, soul, and body, the flesh goes last, be preserved like jelly, jams. I don't know, when you do pickles and all that, is that like a preserve in a pickle, cucumber? Blameless. Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's not the second advent. That's the rapture. You know what Paul wants from Christians? When the Lord comes, when the rapture comes for us, we be blameless. 1 John 5, 7, Genesis 1, 26, and Philippians 1, 6. Paul's aspect, Paul's goal for the Christian is when the Lord comes, he finds you blameless. Now, why would Paul say that if you could not do that? Paul does not want to see holy smoke at the judgment seat of Christ. I think Paul has Christians. I think he has a well, well outlook for his Christians. Strive for mastery. 
I, as a matter of fact, I believe that's somewhere it says that in the Bible. Faith, full, faith, full of faith, faithful, is he, God, that calleth you, who also will do it. So do you want to be faithful? What God's called you to do, do it. Paragraph. Brethren, pray for us. Nothing wrong with asking people to pray for you. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. So this is to be read to everybody. It's not to be kept locked up. It's not to be kept away from the congregation so they don't read it. There was, a, there was a church in church history where they kept the Bible away from the people. There was a time in church history, the Bible was so pure and so not available that they would chain it to pulpits and you would have to pay in order to go in the church and read for a certain amount of time. And the printing press came, thank God, and the Bible was printed out and the people would get it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And kind of weird that this letter to these wonderful Christians, Paul doesn't list a bunch of people either. You figure with the Thessalonians as happy as it, he'd be mentioning names, but he doesn't.